Welcome to Cal TV News' first segment of Off Script, where we talk to reporters about their behind the scenes stories from the field. My name is Tomas Manglonia with Cal TV News, the co director of the department. We're going to start off this first segment with Perla Shaheen, one of our Cal TV News returner reporters. Uh, she was here last semester. Perla, you actually sat down with the new chancellor, Chancellor Carol Christ, to talk about a range of issues and topics. Could you give our audience a bit of behind the scenes, how you got that interview set up and what you talked about? Yeah, so um, Carol Christ, once I heard that she that we were getting a new chancellor on campus, I immediately thought that it would be a great story for Cal TV, and I reached out to her over the summer um, when I was spending my time at Berkeley doing an internship over the summer. And I sent out an email um, and her manager actually got back to me, um, or her like uh, publicist got back to me and um, arranged for an interview later in the summer. He asked, are you available in Berkeley? If you are, then we could set up this interview. Um, they made sure to wait until she was, you know, officially a part, uh, officially inaugurated as chancellor and they decided to meet with me and very graciously set up an interview time with me even though she had a lot on her plate entering into the school year and um so yeah i, I met with her in towards the end of august so um i made sure to wait till fall to produce the video because i wanted um to be able to publicize it on campus and when the school year started so when students were coming back and you know hearing about the new chancellor and they'd be more intrigued about you know a video um, to know more about her and so basically I really wanted to when I met with her um, she was just so interesting she's a very strong character and very easy to talk to um, and she really does have the best interest of Berkeley at heart I think she um, yeah, she was just very, she's very, she's been very involved with Berkeley, and so we kind of talked about her past experience and, um, you know, what she, what her priorities are as chancellor and what she really wants for the student body, um, because there were, you know, some students who expressed concerns about, you know, Dirks and his priorities, and so, um, yeah, I just wanted to get to the basis of, like, who she was and what her intentions were for the student body, and yeah, how she planned to deal with controversial issues, um, specifically with like Free Speech Week and things like that. I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, if you, if the viewers don't know, Perla uh, uh, actually produced the story in a two-part series, and so the second part of the series, which we'll share on this post later today so that you can watch it yourself, is uh, her specifically addressing the issue of free speech. Now, we all know that it is controversial. We are supposedly at the end of what was supposed to be Free Speech Week. Yeah. Uh, what was it like talking to her about that, that issue and what was the takeaway from that conversation regarding her outlook on this free speech year? Yeah, so she is um, very much a proponent, proponent of free speech, um, as we would hope <laughs> for that. Um, and she really wanted to ensure the safety of students this year. Um, because you know, with all the issues last year, with the breaking of the Amazon store window and the fire that broke out on campus and all the damages that it cost us, um, this year she wanted to be more precautious about it. Um, so I guess we, you know, had to deal. So we started with Free Speech Week, and um, that was a plan to follow through, but then it didn't end up working. But I guess her take on it is that she really wants to promote an open dialogue between students and the faculty so she set up um, a free speech uh, like a discussion between students and faculty members including herself and she plans to continue that discussion along the year from what I um, from what I got from what when I talked to her and she seems to really hope that we can proceed in the future without violence um, but you know that's an idealistic view, and hopefully, I I support her in hopefully finding out if we can you know figure that out in the future. Of course, this is continuing coverage, and so the story doesn't end with the chancellor's interview. Uh, we've also spoke to people from ASUC, Senator uh, Juniper Angelica. She talked about this on Facebook Live with us. Um, so definitely the conversation will continue. We thank you so much for that interview and the, the insight that you provided us with that. Also joining us today for our first off script segment is Blake Johnson and Talia Lickstein who actually covered the protests recently earlier in the week live. Can you tell us a bit 
about uh, how you went about that process and what was the experience like. This was both of your first stories for Cal TV. Yes. Yeah, so um, pretty much we knew that Free Speech Week was coming up, and so we wanted to go out there and report. Um, it was a little bit nerve-wracking that our first video, at least for me, I think Talia, um, probably the same, that it was our, our first video was a live video, but um, I think it really was a great way to like throw us into the field. Um, you know, the climate of Sproul and um, the protesters that were against Milo coming and the potential free speech week and then the, um, you know, the supporters, it was a really interesting uh, climate, I guess you could say. Um, and so pretty much we got out there. Um, when Tali and I arrived, it was probably, uh, I think I think Milo was supposed to start at 12 and we got there around 11.45 and there were police already blocking it off. So we had to go all the way around the block. So it was, it was really, um, like Perla was saying, like uh, Chancellor Christ um, really did, like there was a lot of effort put into it to prevent it. Um, well, entire, the entire part of Sproul and even cases of Lower Sproul were shut down. Yeah. Now it was also, I, I believe I was hearing, it was also problematic to some students because, you know, it was just disrupting the daily routine and also students of color spaces uh, were, were right. being, were basically shut down as well. Um, could you maybe also, Talia, talk about uh, your experience, you and who you interviewed? Um, we, uh, if our viewers don't know, Talia actually caught a protester as Ma Milo was exiting in his, uh, in his SUV. Yeah, so, so when he says we were thrown into this live uh, interview situation, we were, really, were literally thrown <laughs> into it. There were just people, um, all these police pushing us and into sort of a little crowd where uh, gathering around where Milo's car had been exiting campus in sort of a, an escape mission almost to get away from all the media um, and the people that had been chasing. Um, and we found a woman who was gracious enough to let us interview her after we told her a little bit about what our organization was and how we're a student-run newspaper who wants more information about people that were out here um, protesting and counter-protesting. Um, and this woman talked to us a little bit about why she felt it was important to be out there and her side of the story and her um, outlook on this. I'm not clear whether she was a student or not, um, so that would have been interesting to find out, but it was a quick little run-in that we had with her. Um, but many of those people were not students, which I find interesting, and many of the people out there were, uh, I found, not protesting um, one side or the other of this free speech uh, situation, but the fact that our money as students is going toward a lot of the security that's going, that's uh, preventing a lot of movement through campus and uh, making it very difficult to Because right, this around. week alone, supposedly, it costs close to a million dollars, yes. right? And so Blake and Talia, I was there with you. I was, mm -hmm. I was videotaping your live coverage and uh, our viewers might not, not know this, but this is also part of why we do off script. Uh, we did see someone get arrested who supposedly, at least when we were eyewitnesses there, really was just doing his job. Do you mind explaining, Blake, to our viewers what that was? Yeah, so um, Talia was filming a live video and Tomas and I were, um, were standing there and we're right in the middle of a crowd, so it was really overwhelming. There's a lot going on, and there's riot police pretty much everywhere. And we see this um, African American male following um, uh, like an actual news reporter. I, I'm not sure which channel. And yeah, I believe um, it was KPIX, okay. CBS. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so we saw him following her. Um, later, we find out Tom Tomas knew this, but he was a security guard for the news channel. But the the police misinterpreted why he was following her, and so. Um, they like grabbed him and they were really aggressive with him and all of a sudden I see them pulling out the um the zip tie handcuffs and they're like handcuffing him and you know just being really aggressive with him and we were I, I was like oh my gosh like this is like so intense you know and then you later told us that um like his affiliation and it was like oh wow like you know there's so many other people that you know could have potentially been a m bigger threat and then he was the one that was shown so it was interesting to see especially like just um, like the climate of the protests and like everything that's going on and then they chose to you know do something about him so it's really interesting to see right and just for more context we actually did speak to the reporter mm -hmm. whose security guard this wasn't so he was a private security guard he was former I believe uh, he was a private security guard in Richmond and uh, luckily I would say it you know, of the best that we could make of it, they got everything on camera on their end. Now, I did try to reach out to them and see mm -hmm. online if there was any updates. I couldn't find any, but we hope that really, whatever the situation is, uh, that it's treated, you know, the way it should be. Yeah, of um, but that definitely is why we are doing off script to, to let you know uh, these behind the scenes stories. And just real quick before we wrap up, uh, Perla, um, 
uh, when you interviewed the chancellor, she also touched on the food and housing crisis. Yes. And uh, a story that I produced, and again, we'll be sharing all of these stories after this segment. Uh, she talked about the food and housing crisis, and could you maybe just give a brief uh, explanation of, of what she talked about, and then uh, we'll go on about talking about the uh, ASUC, uh, ASUC's town hall. Yeah, so currently um, UC Berkeley is dealing with a extreme deficit um, because of overpopulation and um, you know it's a public school you have to accept a certain amount of students from a certain state and other areas so um, she's dealing with the overpopulation of students and therefore we have an issue of um, lacking we're lacking housing for those students and um, you know there's not enough for the, the population that's on campus and so she's hoping to solve that um, by, you know, creating more facilities available for students. Um, and she kind of discussed that a little bit. Hopefully we'll see that she'll follow through on those actions and those promises. Um, but yeah, maybe we could solve that. Definitely. And so as I was sharing with you guys, as we do show reviews every week at our meetings, the ACC executive um, uh, EAVP uh, office held a town hall and Congresswoman Barbara Lee was you know, treated as the headliner, and she, she is a well-known person here in California and really across the nation. And so they addressed the issue of uh, uh, food insecurity and housing insecurity, which, uh, uh, you know, is such a crisis here. And they, they really wanted to have the university, state, and really administration as a whole look at this issue as a crisis, just as we discuss other crises that we experience as students. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the biggest takeaways is that even though we do have a large undergraduate um, population when considering these issues such as food and housing insecurity we can't leave out our graduate students and so that was uh, one of the takeaways that maybe uh, you wouldn't find in the actual story but um, the panel really focused on both undergraduate and graduate students and one of them I believe it was Ruben Sanchez who's ethnic studies uh, major graduate he said that we can't forget the community outside of campus and so that, uh, at Cal TV News, we cover everything, both on campus, off campus, and really what affects everyone, no matter what part of uh, the country you live in, or in this case, we even have some international viewers um, across, across the globe. And so we want to thank uh, Talia, Blake, and Perla for sharing their stories with us today, behind the scenes from the field. <laughs> this is our first segment for Off Script. Tune in next week for the second segment of Off Script. Thank you for tuning in to Cal TV News.